artists in, in the province of Hadramont uh, in particular and uh, we mainly work on de developing uh, their, their artistic skills and widening or uh, broadening their perspectives in their fields and other fields of talent and creating collaborations between these artists from Hadramaut uh, and from other places in Yemen and outside Yemen. We have now uh, good collaborations with international organizations and uh, we're, we're hopefully gonna do some projects together uh, on an international scale. Um, uh, the second audience we, we, we target is the community itself it, and as a whole. We're trying to change the whole culture of the community as uh, an accepting talent as a way, and, uh, a way of living and pursuing a career in and not pr uh, to be uh, uh, seen as a waste of time or just like a, uh, should be just ma practiced as a hobby or something like that. And uh, the third um, target, um, targeted group that we uh, focus on is the civil society organizations. As, uh, in total, like we, we have connections with good with um, civil society organizations that we can uh, volunteer for in projects or make them fund us in, in our pro projects and um, uh, connecting these young people f to the organizations to help them pursue these careers uh, in working in, with the organizations or having scholarships from them. So that's basically the relationships between the audiences and um, the challenges, one of the main uh, challenges that we have, uh, as I said, is the lack of administrative experience. Where uh, we were totally fresh, like out of high school and uh, without any clue how this works. But uh, with time, we almost overcome that and got a real uh, uh, experience in this uh, in this work. Um, the other challenge is money also. Uh, we, ha we had a lot of problems with funding and with uh, local NGOs because they don't have money also. Uh, the government doesn't have that much money to support us, but we're trying to make do with everything we, we, we get. Um, successes that we, we did is like most of them is impl actually implementing these programs and changing the way community looks to, to, to us, to talented people, to artists. Um, uh, we, I could talk to you and mention some stories about a couple of artists, but I don't know if the time is running out of me. Yeah. So yeah, we had lots of success stories from almost seven, six, or, or maybe, maybe 10 people that came from zero to hero, as I said. That's it. Uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I will start to be as. Uh, try to be brief as much as I can. Learning is like cultures, like science, always the audience is whoever interested. Uh, like any cultural center, it's always for everyone, but we are like just tailoring our programs to fit with people who struggle in their time schedule and the, their overloads to be able to, to discuss anything. And uh, the dynamics is working into two ways. First, it's a crowd-based uh, initiative, which means that we have no control on the topics, no control on the content. People can start, initiate, and interact on any topic in any field, in any book, whatever they want to do, starting from uh, very small, sh shallow topics to very sophisticated and uh, complicated topics, and the second thing that the facilitation and uh, the alternating rule between who's facilitating and who's receiving is actually crowd-based also, so attendees can uh, start initiating their own sessions and organize it, and the circle is running, and we end up having hundreds of memberships this month, so the cycle of sustainability started already. Uh, well, uh, war victim children are the main target uh, um, at our uh, initiative. Uh, also, besides that, uh, uh, we recruit volunteers, young volunteers, and uh, uh, they are teaching the kids uh, different kind of subjects. And for them, we have uh, a process uh, if they work more than 100 hours uh, in two months, uh, we have a process uh, uh, to f uh, for them to fill the application, and we are sending them to USA for six months, uh, for six weeks, uh, uh, to take the uh, to take other kids for their treatment. Uh, also, uh, the st uh, the street children, 
it's like we haven't started working for them yet, but uh, we are planning to start working to bring street children to, to Peace House Academy so that we can help them too to get education and to know more about social uh, life. Uh, so far, we, like, we, ha we have five, uh, five million children, street children in Afghanistan working on the streets of Afghanistan, and uh, 100,000 of them are addicted to drugs. Um, also, uh, the school, school children, uh, we, we, we don't believe like, in fundraising that much like it, it might be today, but not tomorrow. So we are, making, we are trying our best to uh, make our initiative sustainable. That's why we are planning to open uh, a course, English and computer course, and we will uh, be welcoming s school children uh, to study in that course. And uh, so the money that we receive from the kids, uh, that will directly go to the Peace House. Uh, so to spend on the education of the kids who are living in the Peace House. Thank you all so much. Uh, we have time for, um, I'm, I'm going to do uh, what Hamza did, ask for a few questions um, at the same time, and then each panelist will choose one question to answer that feels most relevant to, to them. Do we have any questions? Yes. Do we have a microphone? A great panel. Uh, maybe like my question will be relevant to only uh, a few of you, but uh, arts usually is a word that you say to your parents, and the next reaction is a slipper uh, thrown your way. Because as you also mentioned, and other parents have mentioned, it's either engineering, being a lawyer, or being a doctor. So how do you engage families of the recipients of your programs or your different workshop? How do you engage them to understand better why arts is so important and can be kind of a driving force for their kids to uh, develop, and how kind of you push them to have that cultural or that like mentality change to accept it as part of, uh, of a personal uh, growth uh, strategy for these uh, young people. Thanks. Another question. Yes. Uh, thank you guys for the great panels. Um, I, my question is for Mohammed from Afghanistan, uh, <laughs> my roommate. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, first, um, I am so proud of you that you're doing this great job, and I'm ready to support you in anything. Um, can you tell me how, how do you convince uh, children who are working, who are, have no intention to, to learn or to come to, to your project, uh, how do you convince them to, to come, and uh, do they have time? Because I think they are, they are working on streets because they don't have other resources to, to stay alive. Thank you. And one more question. Thanks. I was wondering if a couple of you could share one of the inspiring stories that's come out of your work, whether that's somebody who's benefited from your programs or someone that you've interviewed or talked to, an artist, um, and just talk us through sort of the inspiration. Cool. All right. So it's, uh, you can start maybe from Jessica and just a very brief sort of answer to one of the questions. Um, so I think that, I mean, one of the reasons I love talking to artists is just because pretty much every time I talk to them, I feel inspired. Um, but one of the stories that just came to mind um, is one of the first artists that I interviewed um, was Sultana, who is um, a Moroccan rapper. Um, and she um, talks a lot about, you know, how much um, she values kind of social activism um, as part of her rap and really changing she actually had a big role in changing the discourse around rap in Morocco. Um, and so I think that, you know, what is really compelling about it is just um, the way that art um, at the intersection of political activism can be such a powerful catalyst for change um, in these regions. Okay. Um. To answer the first question about engaging par parents in uh, supporting their uh, talented kids is, I'm gonna tell you a story of two, my, of two, my, two of my friends with their parents. Uh, the first one is um, Mahfoud, who is a graffiti artist, a painter, a graphic designer, the all, all in one. So he uh, was uh, really, um, fought from his parents, by his parents, because he wasn't really putting money or food on the table, before, because he was a 
school, drew, school dropout. He dropped out of the ninth grade. He went to a mechanical, uh, mechanical uh, institute, like to learn like how to fix cars and stuff. So he didn't want any of this stuff. He, did, he just wanted to draw. He just wanted to paint, to practice his passion. But when we got to work, we got to have these painting exhibits. We had these uh, participation in like the Behance events, the uh, TEDx events with his art, with his paintings that he does. His parents started to see the bigger picture. He, his parents started to see where he's coming from, why he's fighting for all of this. And uh, he's now a very successful artist. He's a role model for all uh, painters and uh, graffiti artists in Hadramaut. And he might be the best in Yemen uh, in, in graffiti, seriously. And um, he's, he's really pursuing his passion and he's a real inspiration for all of us. And he's, uh, now he's, he, had a, he has lots of uh, networks and uh, connections with NGOs, with uh, companies from Yemen, outside of Yemen. He's working uh, in, graphic, in graphic design. He's getting paid by the do in dollars and he's like amazing. That's one of the stories, the inspirational story, but I gotta get a better one. The, the second person I want the second person I want to talk about is uh, Juman. He was a real like street boy. Like he's not he's not um, <laughs> he didn't he didn't want to like study like a formal school and formal education and stuff like that. He just like I don't know how to say this in English, but he just just like kept going in school and he didn't even uh, like take any interest in it. Finally, he discovered his passion in arts and painting, and he discovered us, and we helped him through uh, his journey in the last couple of years, and now he's studying graphic design and painting in Jordan uh, as, as a scholarship from a businessman uh, that he, uh, he met during one of our uh, events. The third person, these, Muhammad, these, I'm so, really, I'm sorry, Mohammed. Okay. Okay. okay, so these are uh, stories of <laughs> inspiration. Uh, stories of uh, engaging parents, so their parents j just switched 360 uh, from seeing their work and what they have to offer, and uh, we also helped, uh, helped them understand by uh, providing letters from the NGOs that support us and uh, the people that support us to their parents so they understand. Thank you. I have to be brief again. <laughs> so <laughs> Now that you can tell your story. And uh, no. I, I will make it very brief. I, I'm talking about the inclusion in the dialogue especially about parents or about things that inspire things outside the stereotypes. So we usually encourage people who attended sessions or, or engage in any co-learning activities to start breaking stereotypes by bringing your parents, whatever. I was conducting like sessions talking about ISIS and parents of attendees started to worry about who's this guy that like talking about politics and stuff like this. I thought like, please bring parents and start conducting the sessions for them. And this was like r really good because they start coming and start having things. And also about including people that always are not included. For example, this kind of events are always made for people coming from certain educational background. But what about taxi drivers? What about people that do not have uh, this kind of education? So for example, I found uh, a taxi driver that was reading in astronomy and I brought him as a facilitator for astronomy uh, workshop he will lead. And he's brought in like, people from all over the city, do not have any kind of very advanced education, but they are starting like a course through Coursera or a study group in astronomy. So this is kind of di real dialogue of including people that are not really talking with us. Uh, answer to the first question, uh, question of Ayaz was how to convince the street children. Well, uh, street children who are working on the roads, they, uh, whether their uh, parents are died or whether they don't have anyone to support them, so th that's why they, they go to the streets and to work. So uh, our aim is not just only to bring them and uh, for, for a few hours and to educate them, but to find sponsor for them so that we can support their families and the money that they uh, earn per day, like we, dub we, we pay them double of that and, uh, so that they don't work on the streets and they uh, stay at the peace house or at their house, but they continue to their educations. Uh, 
uh, the inspi uh, inspiring story, uh, we had lots of stories, but I just want to mention one about the girl who is, who is living at the Peace House Academy. Her name is Fahima, and uh, we sent her in 2009 to USA, but when she returned, uh, her family was so strict and uh, they were not letting her to go to school. Um, they are in a very far, uh, they were in a very far province of Afghanistan. So she fought for, for like two years to just uh, continue to her education and this year he got succeed to come to the Peace House and to continue to her, her education. Right now she's in uh, 12th grade and she's trying her best to get a scholarship in the USA. Thank you all so much. Let's give our parents a round of applause.